Great question. Uh, lots of different things, but ultimately I write code. So at our company, we make shipping software. And so we basically integrate the carriers of the world. So the Postal Service, UPS, FedEx, DHL, and a bunch of other um, carriers. And we allow developers to connect to our software. So we build an API. And so if I own a website that I sell products on and I want to ship to various places in the world, instead of me as a developer plugging into every single carrier, you plug into Easy Post, and we've already connected to all the different carriers. And so I'm on the customer escalations team specifically. So when a customer reports a bug or needs a feature added, that's kind of what we do is we, we are the firefighters, if you will, for uh, all of our customers. Uh, so I started when I was 12, just building video games, uh, just because it was a fun little hobby. And then eventually I started building websites because I needed to have a place to put those games. So building uh, shipping software wasn't, you know, the, the end goal, um, but it's kind of where I landed up. I definitely knew that I wanted to be building really cool things. And uh, through this whole coronavirus pandemic, I've come to realize that what I work on uh, on the surface may not be like super sexy, right? But at the end of the day, like that's how a lot of us uh, around the world are getting things right now, right? Like some of us can't go out there right now. Um, and so we order things off on the internet and it comes to us that way. Uh, Christmas is coming up, realizing that, you know, a lot of people are going to get their Christmas presents through our company is really, really cool. So um, I didn't, I, I also started in IT and then shifted into like a technical support role for our customers uh, doing uh, just email basically and then uh, shifted into engineering because I knew like long term I was like I want to build cool stuff right so in, in IT I got like a taste of the technical side of things then I got into the support side and then talking to customers about the API I realized well this is this is fun but I'm not building it and so then I wanted to actually uh, do something really fun and, and actually build our product which is why I transitioned into that this profession in particular allows you to use your brain every single day. And so a lot of people do think it's, you know, it's kind of like the matrix or like there's code everywhere and you're just, you know, slamming down on the keyboard. But really a lot of days it's like an hour of code and seven hours of just thinking, which is like a really interesting takeaway because a lot of people do think it's just straight up code, but software engineering, and that's why it's called software engineering versus software development is you're, you're thinking through difficult problems and coming up with a solution to that problem and then actually coding it. Um, and so what I love about this job is not only do you get to build cool stuff, but it's super challenging. Um, it's really interesting. Um, and and, a, and it's a difficult job to get into um, because it is so challenging. And so it's, it's, I don't know, I guess I'd say it's kind of fun to be a part of of you know the, the technical elite, uh, if you will, um, but it's just it's just a fun learning experience because every single day I pick up something new, um, and there's not not a lot of jobs to my knowledge that you can continually learn every day because a lot of them become mundane, but every day I'm hit with something new and exciting, so that's why I like it. Uh, long hours is definitely one of the big ones. So um, a lot of software engineering jobs require you to be on call, which means that if in the middle of the night your software breaks, you have to get up and go fix it. Luckily, I don't have to be on call, um, but often, you know, I'm working eight to 12 hour days. Um, try and keep it on the lower end of that. Obviously, you want a uh, family and, and home and work balance. That's definitely a con is that they're, they're long hours because there's lots of work to do, right? Um, because there's so much thinking, coding, planning, um, and then team meetings, there's, there's a lot to, to do during a day. Um, another one is you can get burned out pretty um, quickly also because it is so challenging, thought provoking. And so it's a very hard job. Um, you know, you can't sit there watching YouTube while you uh, click buttons, you know, on your screen because coding and, and, and YouTube don't work that way. It's not like you're just responding to emails and then you're hanging out with your coworkers. Um, it's it's much more involved. And so burnout happens very frequently in this industry, which is often why you'll see people jump from job to job, you know, six to 12 months is it's pretty standard for engineers. They only stick around for a short amount of time. So that can be very challenging because you meet friends and then you lose them very quickly. Um, so, so those are a couple of cons.
one of the greatest things to me is actually helping others with software. Um, I really, really love being able to, I'm certainly no expert in any one language or, or technique, but I'd love to be able to teach those who are interested because coding, and, I, and I've always said this since I was younger, coding is really unique in the fact that you can build something in seconds, really. Um, I mean, you know, you type print hello world into a console and you've created your first program, right? It's nothing so, but it's, it's uh, something that you can actually see. It's tangible. It's right there immediately versus uh, previous uh, or not previous, excuse me, uh, something like building a birdhouse, for instance, right? That takes a lot of time. Um, you have to go get all the materials. You have to get a plan. Um and it, it, it's it's a laborious process. Software, a few lines of code, and immediately you can see changes, especially like web development, right? You add a picture in, you change the color, you add some text, and like immediately in front of your face, it's coming alive. And that's really cool to me. And so being able to teach others so that they can see, to, to see the enjoyment of them building something for themselves is really empowering, not only for me, um, but also for the person experiencing it. And so that's that's one thing that I think is really fulfilling about software engineering. I also think that um, a lot of problems are fixed by software, right? Um, and so being able to build a solution to a problem is really great. A lot of the projects on my GitHub are, are actually not because I just wanted to build a portfolio or build something cool, but literally I had a problem at one time in my past. So I built some piece of software to fix the problem. And that's really cool because because instead of, um, you needing to do a mundane task over and over once a month, let's say, you build a piece of software that does it for you, and that's that's really cool. It's time saving. It's fun. Uh, solving problems is like one of the coolest things in life, I think, and and you really get a great chance of that um, in software development. Oh, it's huge, uh, and that's something that we talk about a lot in our business. So we're coming up on Q4. It's the biggest um, and most crazy time of the year for us, right? Because we will be shipping way more products um, packages through our platform in the next two to, two to three months versus the entire rest of the year. And so if we're not all communicating um, constantly and making sure that we're all on the same page, something's going to break. And sometimes it does in software, right? So let's say that I push up some code that does something, my buddy pushes up some code that does something and they're not compatible. And, and we both knew about it but we didn't talk about it, that's a big problem, right? And so we do have those daily meetings where we talk about what we're doing to make sure everybody's on the same page. We also do a lot of communication with our support team. So our customers will email into our support team. They'll discuss bugs, problems, best workflows, you know, how to use our product. And then support will talk to us about those bugs or what they should tell the customer. And if we're not communicating well internally, how are we possibly going to get our customer, uh, you know, the best information? And some of our customers are massive, massive uh, retailers that you would know, big name. Um, and if, you know, we're, we're not getting those these big customers the information they need, then they're going to lose interest. They're going to move to a competitor. So super important that communication is solid throughout the entire workflow. No, um, I, th I thought it was going to be kind of like I explained earlier, where it's just like head down coding all day. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely been much more of a team thing um, than I thought it was, too. I, you know, I thought, like you mentioned, it was going to be a lot of solo work, um, but it is a lot of pair programming. It's a lot of discussion. It's a lot of we don't do it so much now because, you know, we're not in the office uh, thanks to coronavirus, but it's a lot of whiteboarding and, and thinking and brainstorming. So, uh, no, it was. It was a surprise for sure. So I studied business. Um, I wanted to get into business management of some sort. And management, like I mentioned earlier, still may, may be in my future. Um, for me, it's... And, and I actually dropped out of college too. Um, so I got my associates and was helping to build a startup at the time. We had about 70 employees. Things were going really well. And I thought to myself why am I studying business when I'm helping run a business? <laughs> like, like this business that I'm starting is, is helping teach me what I need to know. And so I actually dropped out um, and helped start that business and it went really well um, and they got acquired. 
and now I'm into technology. But while I was at that business, I was doing technology. Um, I I think college is a fantastic thing um, for those that learn well that way. Uh, me particularly, I don't learn super well in a classroom setting. I learn much more by doing. And so it worked out for me to to go and do for a few years. I worked. Uh, I basically got my experience on the job. In my free time, I was, you know, building these projects, reading books, um, watching YouTube videos on the subjects that I was interested in. And it worked out well. However, it doesn't for some people. And that's why I think college is great. So um, I did get some some experience at college and then I got the rest uh, uh, in the workplace. So, yeah, I, I know that it's definitely a big push uh, around the nation to get software development or technology classes in schools. Um, and it's it's probably a struggle still um, to find them, to get like people excited and discussing it. Uh, my biggest thing, a lot of, a lot of people your age and um, people younger spend a lot of their time watching funny TikToks, YouTube videos, right? Um, which is, is great and awesome. But the difference, I think, at least for me, what I did as a kid is I went online and I was like, how to build a video game. And I watched YouTube videos on that. And then I started looking at like uh, how to repair iPhones is what I did in high school. Um, and I started a little business repairing iPhones, which got me more involved in technology. And then I, you know, I, I started, um, I, I'm, so I'm self-taught. So I actually, I went to college and, but I never studied any computer science classes. And similarly in high school, all I took was a keyboarding class is about the closest thing I got to uh, technology. And um so everything I learned was self-taught, and I think that for people your age, the best thing to do is literally just have a passion to learn and then dedicate some time to do it um, because there are so many resources out there that you could learn your entire um, the entire amount of information that you're going to need to be a software engineer in five or ten years um, right now, right? Like you don't have to spend any money. You accept time. That's all it's going to take. And then I would suggest building out a portfolio. Um, so, so come up with a really interesting idea. It doesn't have to be unique or brand new, but build the snake game, right? That a lot of first uh, engineers build that you go pick up the little dots and you get bigger. Like build a Sudoku solver. Um, do these things that have been done before, but, but do them yourself so that you know how. Um, a lot of people say don't reinvent the will. Well, in the beginning, yeah, go reinvent the will because otherwise you don't know how to build a will, right? Um, and so, so that's what I did. I, as, I, as I went out, I found really interesting projects built to myself, although I knew they were out there so that I knew how to do it. It gave me the skills. And then I just continued to build on that. And, and you get to a point where you have a really nice portfolio so that by the time you're uh, ready for employment, and, you know, a few years from now, you can say, hey, check it out. Here's my three dozen projects that I've built. And they're really cool. And they work. And you're ready to go. Um, so, so that's what I think is, I think that if you can get in on the school level and they're supportive, fantastic. You should do it. Um, if there's not quite enough interest there, uh, classes, resources, do it yourself. Because there's, as long as you have access to a computer, and you give it some time, you're, I think, going to find great success. And um, definitely being able to move forward through failure. Um, software engineering is, is equal parts coding new stuff and also debugging or fixing old stuff. And it can be really frustrating when you're trying to fix something uh, and it's not working. You can't figure it out. And so patience is a virtue. Uh, one you should have as a software developer. I think the other one is just the ability to think critically. Um, and so that's one thing I think school is is pretty good at, is helping you think critically. Um, a lot of people ask, oh, do you ever use calculus? Or do you use these harder maths? And the answer is no. Like, I, I have never touched calculus after taking it. But the thinking critically part of going through that calculus class definitely applies to uh, what I do every single day because it's not surface level stuff, you know, two plus two equals four, sure. But once you get into software engineering, it's exponentially more difficult than two plus two. And so you have to sit there, breathe, think through the problem. 
super competitive. Yeah. So in Utah, in <clears throat> I'm not sure how familiar with the the geography of Utah you are, but you've got Salt Lake City, which most people kind of know about, and then you've got Provo, which is a little farther south by about an hour, 45 minutes. And in between the two cities is what we call Silicon Slopes. So you have Silicon Valley, which is out in California. And then in Utah, you have Silicon Slopes. And it's because a lot of these businesses out in California realize, hey, we pay a lot of money to have our houses and our companies out here in California. Let's move to Utah. So they actually come, a lot of them come here, and they've built this massive business uh, technology hub right here in the middle of those two. Yeah, so so because there's all these companies that have come here, there's lots of jobs, there's lots of tech companies, but there's also lots of qualified people who live here now because of that. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's definitely competitive. It's a very hard job to get into. And so once you get into it, you you hold on tight and you, uh, you make sure you keep building your skills so that you remain uh, eligible for new employers in the future. Just do it. Uh, just, just go for it. It's, it's, it can be kind of scary. It, it may feel at times there's a lot to learn. There, there are certainly so many technologies out there, right? I mean, there's dozens of programming languages, if not hundreds, uh, that are viable options right now. Uh, you've got all different platforms and, and frameworks within all of those languages. You know, do you learn Windows, Linux, Mac OS? What do you spend your time on? Really, just pick something and start there. And, and just really grow in it. And uh, in time, you'll find that you, you know, I, so I started with PHP building websites and HTML and CSS. And then I was like, man, I need a database. And so then I, I learned MySQL. And now I have four really solid um, stacks or pieces of stack that I can use. It's like, well, now I need to learn how to do a server. And so then you jump into something like Docker and you learn that. And um, maybe all these are flying past. Maybe you know what they are. But um just take it one step at a time. You learn how to build a website. Then you learn how to add the database to it. Then you learn how to actually put it on a server so people can get to it. And suddenly, you're just scooping up all this info. And so just just go for it. Have fun. Build really cool projects. Learn as much as you can. Um, and then connect with with professionals in the industry. You know, to Do exactly what you're doing. Talk to, talk to people. Get their insight. Um, Find out what they wish they would have done. Uh, learn as much as you can, and you'll be way ahead of your peers who just went through the motions, went to their college classes, didn't do anything on their own free time because you're starting out so young, which is fantastic. Um, by the time you get to wherever they are, out into the job market, you'll be you'll be years ahead.